Hello Leo, welcome back to my channel. This is Skeleton Key Tarot and this is a tarot card reading for Leo. All Leo placements, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Wherever you've got Leo in your chart or in your life, there's something in this message for you. And as always, cross watchers are welcome here too. So let's begin. First of all, Leo, you've got the judgment card. There's no going back. There's no turning back. It's a point of no return. There's been some kind of realization or awakening to the truth, awakening to a higher calling. This could be a second chance at something, waking up from a long sleepwalking, sleepwalking, waking up, sleepwalking, or like back from the dead. Don't call it a comeback. Okay, so there's a queen of swords that just came out with the... Seven of Wands. All right, Ice Queen. Somebody is very intelligent, very sharp, very harsh with the words, okay? This could be somebody that you could have had a confrontation with, or this is you being authentic to yourself, standing up for yourself with the Seven of Wands, declaring your stance, taking a stand, declaring your position, standing up for what you believe and speaking your mind clearly, articulately, in no uncertain terms. This is feminine air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We've also got the fire signs, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And then here's your energy. This is Saturn in Leo. No, wait, no, it's Mars in Leo. I always get the two mixed up. Mars in Leo. This is taking action, fighting for what you believe in, speaking your mind, letting it be known what it is that you stand for. The, the Queen of Wands, no, sorry, Queen of Swords... <laughs> She wears a mask, and underneath that mask is another mask. It's masks all the way down. She wants to take off the mask. It's just, there's more masks, okay? It's a complicated onion-like structure of just layers and layers. She's a difficult person to understand sometimes. There's a lot going on with her. She's complicated. She has a long history. Her past is difficult. She's learned a lot of hard lessons through suffering and she's but she's so smart. She's so intelligent, so perceptive, so perspicacious, so intelligent like she she reads people really well. <laughs> so um what is this? Reading you your rights? I'm hearing something like reading you the riot act. Huh. So there could be like an argument here and you realize the truth about something and there may be criticism. She's, she may be criticizing you or there's a need to accept valid criticism. Somebody may be criticizing you or you are criticizing somebody else. There's a fight here. There's an argument. There's defensiveness. There's critical um, yeah, there's criticism, okay? Accusations, maybe. But being very clear about who you are, where you, what you stand for, what, where you stand on some kind of an issue. And then there's something about the criticism being constructive. So when you are using your discernment to, to form this opinion. All right, what am I trying to say? Criticism should be used constructively, sparingly, but constructively. So it's not meant to make somebody feel bad or drag somebody down. It's meant to uplift and motivate somebody to do better. So you're not criticizing somebody to ruin their day or make them feel like a terrible person. You're criticizing them to show them how they could do better. It, it's meant to motivate, not to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like dissuade somebody or demoralize. Okay. But I feel like some of this criticism may be demoralizing and it like takes away your motivation. You feel like you don't want to participate in something because the criticism is not motivating. It is demoralizing. And that's not what it's meant to do. It's not meant to demonize somebody for maybe their flaws or what is perceived to be wrong or doing something wrong or not performing or something like this. It's meant supposed to be meant to inspire and to motivate. So if this is you criticizing somebody, I think it's best to reflect a little bit on am I am I criticizing from a place of trying to tear this person down or am I going to like 
put it in such a way, put it in words, put my criticism in words in such a way that it motivates this person to do better next time. You know, something about that here where I feel like maybe somebody is not giving you that kind of consideration and you have to sort through the emotional, bitter coldness right? To find the piece that actually fits. So you can accept valid criticism from somebody who's very harsh and also have good boundaries and stand up for yourself at the same time. So maybe there's a grain of truth in what they were saying, but that doesn't mean you have to accept them being nasty or mean or rude to you either. There's a conflict here, okay? But this is meant to be more of like a quick reading today. We do have the four of swords at the bottom of the deck. So I'm going to just stick that there. It's about compromise. It's about finding a middle ground. It's about a win-win outcome. It's about settling the disagreement, settling the argument so that there's like a fair um, outcome, a fair agreement, reaching some kind of compromise together. You may have to have some kind of intermediary between you, some kind of, um, what's it called? Moderator, you know, moderating the debate. But it looks like whatever this argument is, whatever this criticism is, you're going to be able to put it to rest. You're going to be able to take a break, take a step back. Think on it. Sleep on it. Okay, sleep on it. That's the message. Um, let's get a, one Oracle of the Radiant Sun. Okay, we got Rebellion. Yeah, Mars in Aquarius. This is about doing things your own way, challenging authority. There is somebody here who's like pointing their sword at these military figures. So it's an outsider. There is this outsider energy who is challenging authority. It's rebellious and it's confrontational and it's unpleasant. And I want to read a little bit Mars and Aquarius. There's, it's like doing it your own way, doing your own thing, regardless of what other people think. And this is like standing up for yourself again. Leading a protest, expressing discontent with authority, the courage to be different, and anger over indifference. Um, re receiving this card in a reading indicates a need for a lateral approach to the question. Turn the current thinking on its head and approach it from a different angle. A drastic change of thought is needed. Okay. So maybe there's something that changes your mind or you've got to look at this in a different way. And maybe that's what's going to help you put the argument to rest, to find peace within yourself by seeing this somehow in a different way. Uh, maybe no longer feeling so defensive about this. Maybe no longer feeling like you have to hide your authentic self. You can be yourself. You can challenge the status quo and... Somebody is, if somebody is indifferent, yeah, Queen of Swords can be very indifferent. Okay, I can see you getting upset about that. And then we've got the knowledge here. This is about applying your intelligence. Carefully applied. Yeah, again, somebody's very intelligent and they're using that knowledge that they have, that information, that intelligence, that clarity of mind to articulate their point of view. So it's like you're in an argument with somebody, maybe an authority figure in your life, somebody who's got a measure of authority in your life, some kind of influence or power in your life, and you are challenging them, or you are standing up to them, and you're using all of your tools, you're using your intelligence to articulate your own point of view, your own values, okay? Um, knowledge is also about books. There could be a book that you are reading or that you need to read that is calling to you that will help you to learn how to, or yeah, how to stand up for yourself, how to articulate, how to put it into words. I just saw the Capricorn card real quick. There could be a Capricorn involved. You could have Capricorn in your chart. I also see Libra, Leo, Aquarius, air signs, fire signs. Um, let's get one astrology card. Okay, we got house number two. This is all about your physical security, your possessions, your material values, and your self-worth. Yes. Okay. House number two. Look at your astrology chart, your birth chart. Look at house number two. What is on your second house? Do you have any planets in your second house? This can point you in the right direction, what you need to do, what you need in your life to feel secure. 
How do you approach your material possessions? What do you value as far as your possessions, your home, your car, whatever, okay? That may be something that you're fighting about, fighting about money. You have a disagreement about money. You have a disagreement about sec what security means, what your values are. So yeah, there could be a book that could help you and it might not be, ex there might, yeah, it might not be expected, right? You could be reading a book and somehow the author puts something into words and it really is like, wow, I've never thought of it that way before, you know? And it helps you to articulate your own point of view. And then you can take that point of view and apply that to your situation and use those words to stand up for who you are, to assert who you are and what you believe in. We get the four leaf clover, which is great good fortune. So this is like wheel of fortune card. This is good. This is a good thing. There's a fortunate outcome to this. But the peacock is also here. So be aware of and beware of being too prideful and We've got the heart. We've got love, deep affection, and caring. Somebody really cares about you. Somebody really loves you and cares about you. And if you are very prideful and determined to have your own way, have your own say, to be defensive and not listen, um, maybe they are criticizing you from a place of care. They really care about you and it hurts your pride the way that they are, you know, the way that they're putting it, the way that they criticize you, the way that they point something out to you or something that they're doing well beware of that because maybe you'll end up blocking out somebody who really means well and you know they're not perfect they're not maybe they're not good at articulating and expressing their feelings for instance they're not good at expressing how they care and what they care about and how they love you and they come off as being cold and indifferent you know nobody's perfect you're not perfect I'm not perfect nobody's perfect right so Okay, we've got the ant, which is work, achievement, and success. So that's good. You, you're achieving success with hard work. We got the gavel here, involvement with the law, and plenty of material things. So there could be some kind of a legal situation, a, um, a document, a court case or something that's going to be successful and you will gain money somehow from it for some of you. There could be money coming in at as a um, uh, outcome for some kind of legal judgment or something. There could be like an inheritance that's or a just like a court case, you know, it could be custody, could be child support, could be um, alimony, could be like you're trying to sell a house or something. I don't know. And there's involvement with the law, but... You have plenty of material things. You you achieve some kind of success here. So yeah, physical security, house number two, self-worth, material possessions and values, plenty of material things. So definitely check out your second house. Okay, that's what I've got for you today. Yeah, um, I I think this is this is a good reading. It ends up, you know, in a good place. Ju Jupiter in Libra. Yeah, that's justice. The the involvement with the law, the justice system. It's a good outcome. It's a positive outcome to some kind of an argument or deliberation or yeah, there may be an intermediary involved as in such as the law, you know, there could be a judge or something and you go before the judge and the judge sorts it out. You're in this argument, the judge makes a decision and it's fair. It's fair to you. It's good for you. It's fair to everybody. That's for some. It's not going to be for everybody, though. So, you know, take what resonates for you. This is a general reading. But that's what I've got for you today, Leo. I hope this was helpful. This was just meant to be like a, a little quick reading. I'm doing somewhat faster readings today. So I hope this was helpful. Let me get... Before I go, I'm going to... I hope this was of service to you. I'm going to light this candle. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good luck. Good fortune. A good outcome. A good win-win solution. But you may need to do some reading, like reading up on the law. Reading this book. What, hold on. I feel like there's something here. Knowledge. Esoterica. Absolute focus. Dedication to learning. The application of knowledge and rationality. 
So it's important to stay rational, to be very clear, very focused. Mm, yeah, determined to uphold your own values, to assert yourself and your self-worth as well. Because that's what the Seven of Wands is about. It's like asserting yourself. Value, you value yourself. You are authentic to yourself. So staying true to yourself and being very focused on your work, your achievement, your success. All right, that's that's where I'm going to leave it. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was of service to you. If you enjoyed this and you'd like a personal reading, my email's in the description box below. You can email me. I'll let you know how it works. You let me know what you need. But in any case, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Bye.